are going to discuss a topic that is polycycle. In previous lectures of carbohydrate, we have seen a monosaccharide, oligosaccharide, and different examples. Now we will go for the polysaccharide. These polysaccharides are made up of more than 10 units of the monosaccharide. Therefore, name is given as a polysaccharide. In the classification, we have seen that these polysaccharides are classified as a homopolysaccharide and heteropolysaccharide depending upon the units of the monosaccharide present. Homopolysaccharide. Polysaccharide and the other type is heteropolysaccharide. This homopolysaccharide and heteropolysaccharide type of the polysaccharide, homopolysaccharide. Homo are made up of same type of the same type of monosaccharides while heteropolysaccharides are made up of different type different type ok now this is the classification of polysaccharide on the basis of type of the monosaccharide present that homopolysaccharide and heteropolysaccharide now, on the basis of function, these polysaccharides are classified as a storage polysaccharide and structural polysaccharide. Storage polysaccharide and structural polysaccharide. The storage polysaccharide is having a function to store the energy, to store the energy and structural polysaccharide having a role to play in a structure. Now, let us consider first a storage polysaccharide okay in storage polysaccharide the first example is a starch it is an example of storage polysaccharide and it is an example of an homopolysaccharide starch is a component which is present in the plant material and which serve as an energy it can serve as an energy for plant itself in the seeds as well as it can serve energy for the human beings. Therefore, the starch are important. Starch are made up of two components amino amylose plus amino pectin amino pectin ok. These are made up of an amylose and amylo pectin. 20% of the starch is made up of an amylose while 80% of the starch is made up of an amylopectin. Ok, now let us consider first that is a amylose. Amylose is a linear polysaccharide. Amylose is a linear polysaccharide which is made up of an 20 to 25 units of the monosaccharide. This linear polysaccharide having 20% of starch component and it is made up of an deep glucose. These deep glucose are linked by alpha 1 4 linkage. Here in case of an amylose we are having a alpha 1 4 linkage. Generally there are 20 to 25 units of the deep glucose are present and it is a linear polysaccharide. Ok, now let us consider the structure for amylose. Here we are writing the glucose structure. Ok. of the glucose for sake of convenience I am writing separately after this we can join them ok and here is a OH CH2 OH OH and here is the OH ok these two glucose units will join by alpha 1 4 linkage so here we are having alpha 1 4 linkage and they join number of times so that will result into formation of 
amylo. So number of types. Okay. This amylo, this amylo gives a blue color, blue color in iodine solution. Iodine solution. In iodine solution, when amylo is there, that will give the blue color. Now let's consider the second component of this. That is the amylo pectin. This amylo pectin is made up of an 80% or it is having a 80% of the starch carbon. So in a starch, there is a 80% of an amylo pectin, which is a branch polysaccharide, which is a branch polysaccharide. And after every 20 to 25 minutes, we are observing a branch. So branching is observed after every 20 to 25 units and this branching is through branching is through alpha 1,6 linkage. Alpha 1,6 linkage. Why? Similar to the amylo, it is having alpha 1,4 linkage. Okay. This alpha 1,4 linkage is a backbone while alpha 1,6 is giving the branching. Now let's consider for structure of this. Now here we can write the stretching structure like this. Okay. Now these two units here we have written of D glucose and suppose here there are the remaining components. Now this will show the branching by attaching with this CS2 which is a 6 number 4 a given next D glucose. So here again we are having that. Here we can write like this. So the structure with a branching nature of amino here we can have again a here number type. Here we can have for the next. So here we can see that alpha 1,4 linkage is there in linear combination while for the branching the linkage is alpha 1,6. Okay. So we are having a amino pectin as a branch. It is having a branching after every 20 to 25 minutes which is 80% in the start and branching is by alpha 1,6 linkage while backbone is alpha 1,4. Now when we consider in iodine solution it gives a red to violet color. Okay, red to violet. Here it is in the I2 solution. So in a iodine solution we are having amino pectin as a red to violet. Okay. So this is regarding the starch which is a storage polysaccharide. This starch is a storage polysaccharide in a plants. In animals, glycogen. Glycogen. Here we will say here the second example. Glycogen. It is a storage polysaccharide in the animals. It also having a similar structure like the starch. The exception is that here branching is observed after every 8 to 10 units. So we are having a branching in case of a glycogen after every 8 to 10 units. So these are the two examples of the storage polysaccharide. In storage polysaccharide, first example we have considered starch which is a storage of the energy for the plants. Here there are two components of the starch, amylo and amylo pectin. 20% of the starch is made up of an amylo, 80% of the starch is made up of an amylo pectin. Amylo is having 20 to 25 minutes of the D glucose attached linearly. It is a linear polysaccharide and having a alpha 1,4 linkage. It is having the alpha 1,4 linkage. So here we can see the structure and that alpha. 1,4 linkage. In an iodine solution, amylo showing a blue color. In an iodine solution, amylo shows a blue color. Now next component that is amylo pectin. Amylo pectin is a branch polysaccharide and branching is observed after every 
20 to 25 units. This branching or two branches are attached by alpha 1 6 linkage. So here there is alpha 1 6 linkage. The backbone linkage is alpha 1 4. So in linear fashion it is alpha 1 4. When branches are attached these are alpha 1 6. In iodine solution it gives red to violet color. Okay. Now second example for the storage polysaccharide is a glycogen. Glycogen is a storage polysaccharide which is present in a animals which store the energy in the form of an glycogen. There are 8 to 20 units branching is observed in the glycogen. Overall structure is similar to the starch. Okay, so these are the two examples. Now let's consider next that is a structural polysaccharide and in structural polysaccharide the first example or the first is a cellulose. We are knowing that cellulose is the most important product or most important compound we are getting from the plant material or food of the plant. That's why this cellulose study or cellulose structure determination is important. Okay. Now with this cellulose structure, cellulose structure. It is again a linear polysaccharide which is having a deep glucose in it. The difference between linear polysaccharide amylose and a cellulose is it having a beta 1,4 linkage. In case of a cellulose there is a beta 1,4 linkage. Now let's consider the structure of a cellulose. In the cellulose here we are having a glucose unit. And in this case, the linkage for these two glucose units are for a cellulose, it is beta 1 4. So, beta 1 4 we have to consider, and here we have to make the beta 1 4 linkage. So, this we can attach by a beta 1 4 linkage. Here we can see a beta. One more linkage for the cellulose. Similarly, this will go further and continue. So here we are having a beta. Here we can also show like this. So it is going for beta. Beta one four. This is the structural polysaccharide. This structural polysaccharide cellulose is having a beta one four linkage in which there are D glucose units present, and these D glucose units are joined by beta. 1 4 linkage. One of the interesting fact that we can digest the starch but we cannot digest the cellulose. The reason is that the bonding present in the starch that is a alpha 1 4 linkage that can be hydrolyzed with the help of an enzymes present in the human body. But in case of a cellulose beta 1 4 linkage we cannot hydrolyze with the help of an enzymes. But in case of the animals, in case of the animals with the help of an enzyme, the animal can hydrolyze this. So that's why they are taking cellulose as a food material. Okay. Now let's consider the second example, which is one of the interesting examples that is a hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid. Okay. Why this hyaluronic acid is important? This hyaluronic acid is important because it acts as a fluid, synovial type of the fluid. That's why this hyaluronic acid is a important. And hyaluronic acid is an example of a heteropolysaccharide. It is an example of a heteropolysaccharide as well as we can say that it is an example of a uh, structural polysaccharide. In a hyaluronic acid, there is a presence of glucuronic acid acid and there is a presence of young acetyl glucosome young acetyl glucosoamide this is a hydropolysaccharide which is made up of and from the dimers these two monomers attaches each other to give the formation of to give the formation of a dimer and this dimer this dimer further attaches to the another dimer to give the formation of an 
polysaccharide now these two these two are attached by beta 1 3 linkage beta 1 3 linkage so let's consider for this